uh, what I see is in the horror, they're much more tongue in cheek. Uh, they're much more self referential. They're always making puns and jokes about the horror film genre inside the horror film. They're still scary, but uh, they're doing a lot more of that. And uh, it seems, in order, if I were to write a horror film now, I'd have to see all the horror films that have happened in the last 29 years in order to be able to make jokes about them through whatever I was writing. Um, you know, that's, that's one thing. Uh, but it's okay. They're just so many. the things you learn in doing daily soap plotting because you're always plotting. You're always figuring out a plot. You know mm -hmm. who's going to do what to what, whom and why. And um, what I'm seeing on television, not film, but I'm, what I'm seeing a lot of on television is um, putting a contract player in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. It's the dumbest idea in the universe. <laughs> it's not dramatic. Everybody in the universe knows the contract players on a network show or even a, you know. And so suddenly you have them flatlining, crushed by a building. Go and get a sandwich. Go, yeah, go get a sandwich. They're not going to die. <laughs> <laughs> and I look at that and I say, who the hell greenlighted this thing? And it is unbelievable. They're just. So many obvious mistakes that um, that keep uh, coming out. My wife and I watch a lot of nighttime television because uh, we've got nothing else to do, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but I do, I do enjoy being entertained. I really do. I like stories. I, you know, I'm still waiting for my father to come back to life and tell me how the motorboat boys come out. But um, it ain't going to come out by saying, my father never said the motorboat boys are a flatline. Um, you know, they were about to go over the fall. But he never said they went over the falls and died. Oh, no, they came back to life. Um, that's the other thing, is that if I see one more false ending, it seems that is absolutely statutory now. Mm -hmm. Boy meets girl. Uh, boy falls in love with girl. Girl falls in love with boy. Boy and girl separate. Boy and girl come back together, and it doesn't work. And then he comes around the block and says, I'm really here. <laughs> And I've, I can't tell you how many of those screenplays I have seen actually made. You know. So we can't, we can't get back together. We're not meant to be together. And we go, and it's just like uh, we're now one hour and 57 minutes into this horrible screenplay. <laughs> um, and I walk away from you, and then suddenly I can't, and I run back for you, and you run back for me, and now we won't say it. Um, it's just, I don't know why, you know. Um, but they're all trying to do one hairy mentality. Well, but I've seen those, it's that caesura, I guess I remember from poetry, that little drop where you just, it's a, but it's a fake. Um, it's a, this isn't, we're going to have a movie that doesn't have a happy ending. Oop, we lied. You know, they're all going to be okay. Um, and we did, it, look, we did it in soap opera all the time. The, the hero would flatline at the third act. I knew how to, how to do that, you know. Oh my God, we're losing him. <laughs> Um, so now I know when I see other people do it. We, we had to do it. We had five hours of drama a week. So I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, you were next. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, one comment. Now, um, when I used to watch them about 30 years ago, you guys were there. Yeah. Yeah, they, they would die and then the twin would come back or something. Oh, yeah, well, that's funny you should <laughs> say that. The, the twin has to come back because, all right. Now we're into the psychosocial part of the soap backstage. Um, all right, I come out of college as an actor. This is not me, obviously, because I'm not an actor. I come out of college as an actor. I get hired on Guiding Lights. And I'm very popular for three years. Uh, I'm the new little studly guy, and I'm the doctor, or the intern, the whatever. I'm suddenly making four or $5,000 a week. Uh, I'm having a wonderful time, and whenever I go out to bars and restaurants, everybody knows who I am. And now, me and my agent say, I've got to go to Hollywood and become a serious motion picture actor, or at least nighttime, because everybody knows that soap, or, soap opera is the bottom part of the aquarium that we're working on. I'm going to go up to the top part. I'm going to go up here. A feature film is way up here. I'll settle for an indie, uh, but if worse comes to worse, I'll take a pilot. And uh, I'll be a you know on CSI Morgan Hill, <laughs> <laughs> and so we're work we're working there. Well, I go out to Hollywood and I'm there for uh, pilot season, and I get in a pilot called CSI Morgan Hill that doesn't get bought. 
And now I'm well. We'll have murders in Morgan oh, yeah. soon. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so now I'm out there and I'm I'm renting a condo with my savings from soap for three years. Remember, I was making four or five thousand dollars a week. I'm doing really well. And I'm out there and I'm, I'm getting uh, readings and I'm going out to auditions and whatnot. And, and uh, the word is out that I'm a TV, I'm a soap star. So I'm not getting the stuff I want because somebody spread the word that I was a famous intern on Guiding Light. Um, and so people are saying, well, yeah, I like what Victor does. He's really good. He looks right for the role and everything.